and welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori and me, will invite a bookish guest to share their favorite book recommendation. If you share a passion for books and always looking for your next read, then join us. Hi, Ri. Welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. Hey, thank you for having me. So tell us what you've been up to. Um, surviving 2020. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm in my last two classes for my bachelor's. So that's exciting. And just trying to figure out what my next move is. I've really been wanting to be a history teacher. So I'm like, do I start a teaching program next? Do I just keep like keep going to school and pursue my master's? Because I have so many options since mm-hmm. I'm out of the military now. I still have money on my GI bill that I can use and I don't want that to go to waste. So it's just trying to figure out like what to do next. Do I go ahead and get the teaching certificate so I can start working or do I keep going to school so that when I do go to work, I can make more money? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm at a crossroads, but so yeah. what kind of master's degree are you thinking? I'm... I really am interested in either library science, regardless, like I'm probably going to have to switch schools because my school only offers like five or six master's degrees. And it's really just like education, business, criminal justice, Mm. which great. I mean, education wouldn't be bad, but then I'm like, do I really want to teach? You know, that's like the thing, like I'm 34 after being a supervisor in the military for so long, I'm like, do I really want to go back to that world of like me and like young people again? I don't know. Yes. So <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. So I have a master's in higher education. Um, I got it right after my bachelor's degree. And so I work in the university setting, like just an administrator. And it was fun. And it was, it was a great career. I did it for about 10 years. And you know, I don't regret getting the master's degree. Like I consider going back to school now that I switched careers, but I'm like, I don't want to take the GREs. So that's what stopped me <laughs> from it. You know, I know library science, you don't need to take the GREs. So I'm like, maybe I'll go for library science. But you know, it's yeah. one of those things where I'm like, I don't know, do I want to go back to school? <laughs> yeah, that's, and, and like, it's, what do you want to do for, Yeah. what do we want to do when we grow up? That's how yeah. I feel like I'm, you know, I'm like, I saw my mom, I'm like, I, I retired from the military. I kind of feel like I should not be working anymore, but mm-hmm. like, I'm still young where I could still start completely over. And it's just yeah. like, what do I want to do? It's, it's nerve wracking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I think 2020, 2020 has shifted everything. Like, you know, the things that I was okay with, like no longer. Okay. And things I'm like, all right, like, these are things I'm fine with it and I'm excited about then I'll stick around with it like you know we work from home we that I've been lucky enough that I get to work from home and so that's something that I'm grateful for and I'm like that I want to keep going you know do I want to go to an office you know exactly yeah I've been thinking the same thing like I have kind of gotten like even before COVID Mm -hmm. I was getting used to that stay at home mom life Mm -hmm. and then COVID kicked off and I'm just like I'm really making this happen like all three of my kids are at home my husband's home most of the time and I'm still able to like do all the things that I need to do and want to do so it's like I'm getting really comfortable that's why I'm like I need to make something happen or I just need to keep doing what I'm doing because it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, it's not. So we shall see. We shall see what, we what 2021 see. will bring us. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So we're going to talk about Christmas recommendations. So it's Christmas time. It's right now when this episode airs is in, de- in December, but we're late November ready for Christmas because 2020 has been a dumpster fire. Yeah. So let's talk about Hallmark movies. What are some of your favorite Hallmark movies? Which movies were you looking forward to watching this season? You know, what Hallmark podcast should we check out? Tell us all about Hallmark right now. Okay, so I will say I'm really proud of Hallmark this year. I feel like they're really stepping it up. We're seeing a lot more diversity in their movies. I One of the fall movies, they actually had... Um, a female female couple that got married in one of the movies I love seeing that 
And I mean, one of the first Christmas movies that we got was Jingle Bell Bride, which is, I think, honestly, I think it's my favorite so far. And it was a Latinx heroine and a black hero. And I loved seeing that. I loved that movie so much. Um, Some of the other favorites that I've had so far this year is Never Kiss a Man in a Christmas Sweater, which came on last week. Christmas mm-hmm. with the Darlings, which had another woman of color as the heroine, which was awesome. Cranberry Christmas. I loved that one because it was a married couple that mm-hmm. had kind of lost their way and seeing them come back together. I think that was a like a first for them. We haven't seen much of that. And I, I really love the actress, Nikki Deloosh, who um, played the heroine in that one. Mm-hmm. And then Uh, Deliver by Christmas, another one. It was an interracial romance. It was a black heroine and a white hero. And I loved that one. And the Christmas bow came on last weekend as well. And it had an Asian heroine. I was like, what is going on? I loved it. She's actually like a violinist in real life. She played the violin in the movie. It was beautiful. And yeah, it was it, they've really been stepping it up. So those are some of my like favorites that we've seen this year. I really love their evergreen movies, which are based on the series by Nancy Nagel. Mm-hmm. And then the one that we have this year, it's following a couple, both of the, both the hero and the heroine, they're both black. And I have been wanting them to get their own movie. And the the male actor tweeted like a month ago, like, we're getting our own movie. We're getting our movie this year. I can't wait for you guys to see it. And I Mm. cried. (laughs) I was like, I've been waiting for this. So yeah, I'm really proud of them. And then anyone that's interested, I love, if you love Hallmark, you have to be listening to the Bubbly Sesh, the podcast. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's hosted by Shalini and Jacqueline. And I mean, literally on Mondays, they drop recaps for all four Christmas romances that premiered over that weekend Mm -hmm. and interviews. It's just, they're doing a lot of work. So Mm -hmm. that's how I keep up with them. (laughs) I love this. (laughs) And if you don't have the Hallmark app, I use the Hallmark app. That's how I am able to set reminders and keep up with what's coming on. I can post Mm -hmm. reviews for the movies. Like I love this one. I wanted more diversity in this one. You know, like it's very, very useful. I love this. So let's talk about Christmas books. So have you read the season first? Oh my gosh. What have I read this season? (laughs) So I start reading holiday romances. Like I don't think people understand for like romance readers, especially Christmas romance lovers, they start coming out in September. So Mm -hmm. pretty much like August, I wrap up my summer reading and we jump straight into Christmas reading. So one of the first ones that I read was The 12 Dogs of Christmas by Lizzie Shane, which Mm -hmm. forever sent to me. So shout out to the amazing Estelle. And I loved it. It was so sweet. And then I read the Sarah Richardson, which was kind of, it was like romance slash women's fiction. Mm -hmm. And it was really good. I read that with my friends, Chloe and Sarah. We read that like as a buddy read and it was really good. So yeah, I've been I've been trying to stay on top of reading reading my arcs, letting people know what I think is good and you know what they should be looking forward to. I read um, the new Jill Shalvis. She has a novella, mm-hmm. Mistletoe in Paradise. That was really sweet, and it's not like your typical Christmas read. I was t- talking to my friend Sarah, and I was like, I feel like we're gonna see more like vacation. Christmas romances, Mm -hmm. which is a lot of fun. I mean, yeah, a lot of times you're in it for like the Christmas scenery and all of that, but keeping it real, there are a lot of people that like go on vacation during Christmas. So, Mm -hmm. and it's still Shelby. She can't do any wrong. Yes. (laughs) Yes. So what are some of your favorite books this year that you read so far? Some of my favorites, just Christmas romance or in general? Yeah, Christmas romance. Okay, so one that I recently read was One Complicated Christmas by Mika Jolie. This is a Black author. I've been wanting to find more holiday romances by Black authors. I'm like, I know that we're writing holiday romances. It's just Mm -hmm. Kindle Unlimited makes things really hard to find sometimes. Mm -hmm. And she actually has another release that's coming out really soon called Home for Christmas or Coming Home for Christmas. 
So she's on it. And one, one Complicated Christmas was a novella. So I'm assuming this one might be as well. Um, but One Complicated Christmas was a second chance romance set in Vermont, which I just imagine is gorgeous during the Christmas season. And it was all about like unrequited love. Her writing was beautiful. You could just tell she believes in like people who are meant to be together, finding their way back to one another. It was so good. And then I read The Christmas Blanket by Candy Steiner, which aside from her poetry collection that she published with Brittany C. Cherry, this was my first romance by her. And it was so sweet and cozy. It was also set in Vermont and it was a second chance novella between mm-hmm. a couple that used to be married. So I loved that. I I just want to see more like we were married or we are married romances because I feel like you can do so much with that. I mean, the happy ever after does not stop just because they got together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's when the work really kicks in. And, and then I read, uh, let's see, the, the Hookup Before Christmas by Phyllis Burney. It's another really short novella, but it was a lot of fun. It's all about this girl who's like living her life. She just went through a breakup and something happens at work. And she's like, let me just go over here to my ex's have more one more like one and done get it out of my system and then I'll never talk to him again and so she goes over to his place and she does not know that he's moved and he's like renting his place out as an Airbnb but I mean the guy that answers the door is really hot (laughs) so you know romance stuff happens it was really fun and then I just finished like yesterday morning Uh, Christmas Charms by Terry Wilson. I love her. And this is a Hallmark published romance. It was really Mm -hmm. sweet, has a little bit of magical realism in it. And I really enjoyed it. I love this. Um, So which which authors are your autobi that we should have your back with? So autobi authors. So right now, I would say I have a couple of these. So anything that Jenny Hale puts out, I'm going to buy. I just really love her unapologetically sweet romances. Mm -hmm. They always make me happy. And she had a release come out. I think it was early this, it was either this month or last month. I got it like as soon as it got out. Mm -hmm. Of course, Jill Shalvis, which she has a new release coming out in January that I'm excited for. Mm -hmm. But right now, like I'm just stalking the Harlequin website, literally Mm -hmm. the beginning of every month. I'm falling in love with their Harlequin romance series. Yes. 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 I love the pretty pink covers. So I've been stalking them. Anything that Therese Bahari puts out, I'm getting, she tends to write for that series. For the Desire line, anything Naima Simone puts out, I, I order it. And anything that Nina Crespo puts out in their special edition series, I buy them. So I love this. I think we should do, I think we should invite Sarah and have you come on the show and talk all things Harlequin. Just another going over because there's like so many hidden gems. There's so many lines, there's so many, and we each have our own favorite. Like exactly. Yes. I've also been like, you know, the romance world has been taking over eBay, I feel like with all these huge books. I've been buying lots of their Kamani romances that have been discontinued. I love finding those. And then I've been in such a paranormal mood. So if I find any of their, like Harlequin Intrigue did a mini series called the Shivers line. I look for those. And then Silhouette before Harlequin bought them, they had a series called The Shadows, Mm -hmm. all paranormals. I've been like stalking eBay. I've been stalking thrift books. I've had more luck with those on thrift books. Mm -hmm. And I just like am buying everything that I see. Like give me all the old school Harlequins, like late 90s, early 2000s. If I see it, I'm going to buy it. (laughs) (laughs) I love this. So what are some of your five-star reads that you had this year? Um, so I've been really, one thing that I've learned from Sarah is like to be stingy with five stars. And I'm glad that I have, because in years past, if I liked a book, it got five stars. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the year, when people would ask, okay, what are your favorites? It's hard to choose from like a list of like 30 or 40 five star Mm -hmm. reads. So I think I have like 
I know it's less than 15, maybe it's 11 or 12, mm -hmm. but the ones that stand out the most are for sure The Trouble with Hating You by Sajni Patel and mm -hmm. Almost Just Friends by Jill Shalvis. I talk about those books all the time. So those are definitely like <laughs> my favorite five stars. I love this. Tell us where you can find you online. So you can find me on Instagram at Falling for Romance. I'm most active there. I sometimes blog. All of my stuff is on my link tree, which you can find in my Instagram profile. Awesome. Thank you, Brie, for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support this podcast. Once you connect with fellow romance readers and make new friends, get weekly book recommendations, attend monthly meetups, then join our Patreon community. You can join at watchmenextblog.com slash Patreon. Romance lovers, check out Queen Bee Reads Etsy shop for cute and comfortable bookish apparel. The shop also features social justice apparel and fun items from some of your favorite TV shows like The Shit Scrakes and The Office. Use code WATCHWE10 to save. Visit watchmenextblog.com slash Queen Bee Reads. What Your Next Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Discover new podcasts to love on frolic.media slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.